Happy Sunday, family. Good to have you here on this 4th of July weekend in the United States. Uh, here with my good friend, Kanisha, hey, dare I say, favorite co-host. You're welcome to say that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> love it. Love it. Well, we're glad you're here as well. You are our favorites as well. So we want to hear more from you. You're in the chat room right now. Definitely reach out. Let us know how we can pray for you, pray for your family, what's going on. Or take the time to text the word CONNECT to 733-733. Getting connected is key. And one way to connect is also through email. We've received an email recently from a missionary in Russia that was really touching. It talked about something that is dear to our hearts, and that is just about baptism. Yeah, and so I just, I'm just i just going to read the email. This will blow your mind. I just love this. It says, um, from Russia, I've been watching the Southeast live stream baptizing people, and I could barely keep from crying. Mm -hmm. Eyes were wet with tears. Uh, tears came. You can't understand how blessed you are to live in a free country where you can worship God. I could, I could see and feel the Holy Spirit all over that service. It was amazing. I hope and pray every day that someday God will pour out the Holy Spirit on this country. It's hard for you to imagine a society where it's taught there is no God, no Jesus, no Holy Spirit officially for 70 plus years and the results that it has. This country has changed so much and now we have returned to live behind a new iron curtain. Soon they are saying we will have no internet. It is so sad, yet God is working bringing people to Christ, but it will take years for it to have churches like Southeast. What an amazing church Southeast is. It's exploded with the Holy Spirit all over it. Thank God for the freedoms you have. The baptism service was so awesome. I don't have words for it. It overwhelmed me with emotions. It was awesome. Praise God for your church. Receiving the Holy Spirit is an awesome experience. Love you all. Please keep me in your prayers. What a powerful thing from uh, a brother, from a sister across the country. And we just want to say this. I, I love the freedoms we have. I love even more that we have a God that's bigger than Absolutely. Uh, the control of a government. And no, he's it's still just at work. So. It's the perspective of being able to hear from someone who was touched by something that we get to witness on a regular basis. And that kind of goes right into what we're talking about. We have so much freedom. We get the opportunity to have two different sermon series going at the same time. One is going to be in person. Absolutely incredible at the movies. We look forward to this every summer. It's an opportunity for us to invite friends, family, and people who may not come to a traditional church service. There's going to be soda. There's going to be popcorn. A great so way good. to get involved. But at the same time, exclusively online for everyone tuning in during that time, Matt here is going to be taking us through Colossians and talking to us about in real life because everybody's trying to live their best life. It's true. And and so we're, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm excited about it. And we're really going to talk about, I was giving you a little teaser earlier, and that is uh, you can't find real life chasing the fake Jesus. And so we're just going to have go home. Yeah, yeah, we're can't just going to have a genuine conversation about that. And I think it's going to be fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, we've got Derek who right after the sermon is going to be leading us through communion and talking to us a little bit, has a story for us. Derek, why don't you give us a little more? Yeah, Matt, we have a story coming up at the end of service about one of our amazing group leaders, Mary Lou Ballard. She's a real person, a part of our real online community, following a real Jesus like Matt had talked about. Uh, and the awesome thing about her story is these past couple of years, God has really brought her closer to himself, uh, closer to a more authentic relationship, kind of despite her circumstances. Uh, Matt Kanisha, it's going to be an awesome story, and we would love for you at home to stick around and watch it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, brother, we're excited, and we're excited for today. It's going to be a great day. Uh, I'm pumped. It's going to be powerful, <laughs> and um, let's just do this. I am ready. Let's go on, go to worship, and we will be here when you get back to talk to Derek. Let's enjoy worship. I got to welcome to church this morning. If you would put your hands together like this. Come on, everybody. There's joy in the house of the Lord. We worship the God who was and is and is to come. Sing with me now. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. Sing. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. God. 
God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause He hung upon that cross, then He rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Oh yeah, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Together we testify, we were the beggars, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, except redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing free. House of the Lord, you say, we were the beggars, now we're royalty. Your 
God is good, right? Uh, listen, my name is Byron. I'm one of your worship leaders here at Southeast. And I was thinking the other day, back in, in Bible times, you know, they, they didn't get to go to the movies. You know, they didn't get to go sit down and watch a film, maybe drink a $5 Diet Coke, uh, or watch, you know, some, some dinosaurs eat people. They, they didn't get to do that. But what they did get to do is watch Jesus, who we believe is the Son of God, do some amazing, miraculous things. Amen? And John, one of Jesus' disciples, one of his closest friends, was also given this picture, this glimpse of heaven, of this kingdom of God that Jesus institutes and that his spirit has been building since, right? So before we sing this next song, I want you guys to close your eyes and try to imagine what John describes for us here in Revelation chapter five. It says, then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Listen, church, we join that same song today. face to face 
Jesus, we thank you for the hope that we have beyond this life, beyond the grave. We thank you for the cross that Jesus bore on our behalf. And we worship you today with all that we are. It's in your name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. You can go ahead and take a seat. We're excited this summer to just spend the next four weeks uh, talking about real life. Not, not only like real life, when we think of real life, how we, we think of things like real life is hard, real life is busy. We want to talk about where do our busy, complicated lives, where do, where do our real lives intersect with the real life that Jesus actually has for us? So as I was thinking about this, I, I thought about my son Noah. I remember when he was growing up, right? Uh, and, and parents, you know, this is kind of complicated. We never know what to do with Santa Claus, especially as believers. And so, you know, when we were little, we were like, well, we're just gonna kind of let it go. We don't want our son to be that kid that's spoiling it for everybody in his kindergarten class. And so I wouldn't say we backed it up, but we just kind of let it go. And, and then one day, I remember us being in uh, Gap, and all the, you know, kind of the clothes hangers are around, like those round things that all kids love to hide in, which is terrible when you have five children. But anyway, so we're sitting there and all the kids seem like they're hidden over on that side. And my wife and I are trying to figure out Christmas and what are we doing and what presents do we have left to, to kind of buy. And so we're just talking, right? And as we're talking, all of a sudden we hear this rustling from inside this little, this little clothing rack. And all of a sudden I look in and it's my Noah, like it's my oldest son. And he, his eyes are like this big and he steps out and he's like, what? And I'm like, I'm like, man, you got to think fast right now. I've got other kids and we got to, you know, I, I, we've, we've got to dive into this quick. So I just grabbed him. I was like, okay, son, come with me. No, just hold on. Just hold on. Come with me. And I pulled him aside and I'm like, man, I got to think fast. And I said, son, look, like we knew this day was going to be coming, the day when you were finally mature enough to hear about the real St. Nicholas, the real Santa Claus. And he was like, well, what do you mean? And I was like, well, you know, the, you know, kind of what you've heard and kind of what you've seen, you know, with the, you know, with the red clothes in the chimney, like that's, that's not really the thing, but the real St. Nicholas, let me tell you, you know that, that we talk about, 
you know, Christmas is about Jesus. Well, St. Nicholas was the original guy. That's why they call him St. Nick. And, and he had this thing where he was just super, we, we honor him because he had this passion for the poor. He had this passion for women and children. And, and during the time of season when people would honor Jesus' birth, he would go around and he would just leave presents because he would make such a big deal out of the life of Jesus. As a matter of fact, on the December 25th, the only reason they really picked that day, they don't really know when Jesus was born, but on that day, it was like the winter solstice, and, and they just knew that in the great darkness, that was the best time for, uh, for, a, for a great light to come, and St. Nicholas utilized that to just bless people and love people, and it's probably time for you to hear about the real Santa Claus. And I remember him just sitting there, and his eyes were big, and, and it could have gone south, right? And he just looked, and he was like, wow why don't we just talk about that guy? <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know why we don't. But you know, for some reason, we kind of allow this fake thing to go around us, right? And let's just be honest, we hate fake. Like I remember, I don't know if you were, I don't know if this was just the 70s, I don't know, but for some odd reason, all the fake food came out. Do you remember this? And everything was fat free and all this, but it just, if you looked at the ingredients, it was terrible. And, and it's like Tang. Can we just have a moment to talk about Tang? Tang is not orange juice, y'all. <laughs> we were sold a lie. It's fake. And I'm just telling you that the, about the time we started figuring that out, I started realizing, man, I don't want fake food. I, I want real food. I, I, we don't want fake clothes. We don't want fake shoes. And by the way, we don't want fake friends. I mean, is there anything worse than a fake friend? I mean, somebody that said that they're gonna be there, but really they were trying to get something out of you, or maybe they were just using you for this purpose, but when it all hit, they kind of disappeared. I mean, we just really don't like feeling like we're sold a lie, that, that you know what, like, like literally everybody's been kind of selling us on this fake reality, but then we find out in a moment that none of that was really real. One of the things that we're gonna lean into with the book of Colossians was he, the, Paul was writing to a church. He had never visited before. He'd been to Ephesus and he'd been to Philippi, but he'd never been to Colossae. And so he writes a book to those people and just says to them, hey, listen, um, and it's almost like he's saying, listen, I understand what you're hearing about Jesus. But sometimes when we grow up and we know people aren't really clear about Jesus, it, it's kind of like Jesus is in a, he's like in a red suit and he comes down the chimney and just gives grace to everybody <laughs> and just anything that you want, I've got it. And it's like, he's this big Santa Claus in the sky. But, but Paul's like, listen, I need you to know the real Jesus because the real Jesus offers a real life that is so much better. So he says in chapter one, verse nine, he says, listen, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we haven't stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who's qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. He says, leans in. It's like, it's like let, me, let me pull you out of what you've, been, what you've been thinking, this fake Jesus and fake whatever it is that's been kind of sold you. He just pulls him, pulls him out and he says, listen, he's rescued us from the dominion of darkness and he's brought us into the kingdom of the son that he loves, in whom, talking about Jesus, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And he just says, listen, I know you're hearing a lot of things, but I wanna make sure that you really know the real life that the real Jesus offers. He goes on in verse 15, he says, listen, the son, talking about Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. The way scripture talks about that is, is Jesus is, is literally all the fullness of the deity. God is, is, is in Jesus, meaning, if you wanna know how God feels about sin, if you wanna know how he feels about sinners, if you wanna feel, know how he feels about the poor, or about what we should give, or what, what he feel, how he feels about building community, I'm just telling you, all you have to do is look at Jesus. Jesus is the image of the invisible. He's the firstborn of all creation, for in him, Jesus, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rules or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He holds it all together. So Paul just says, listen, I wish you knew the real Jesus. Because if you knew the real Jesus, you'd have real life. And, and, I, and, I, and I think that's a word that probably some of us need to hear right now, right? 
Because so many of us have, 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 have settled for a kind of a fake picture of Jesus and a fake picture of what he offers. And, you know, we were sold on, you know, just, you know, show up on Sunday, you know, and he's just dealing grace out and try to be a good person and kind of be nice to people. But, but I think Paul would say, and I think, I think Jesus would say today, but that's not the real Jesus, man. And you're never going to find real life chasing fake Jesus. You want to you wanna find real life? Then dig into who Jesus really was and, and, what he, and, and the grace that he offers that you actually can't do enough to earn his salvation. That's all you're going to find. And that when he pops out of the grave, that there is literally resurrection power in your veins. You want to find the real Jesus? Then dig into the real word that really says not just what people and books say about him, but like to dive into the word and find out really who Jesus is and what he says and let that penetrate your soul. You wanna have real life and you're gonna to have to dig into some real relationships. How long has it been since you've been in a real relationship where you felt known, where you felt like you could really confess your sins and where you could really be transparent and you didn't have to hide all the time? He says, listen, there's real life, but it's on the back of this real community that I've made you for. By the way, you are made to have a real relationship with God. Like not come on Sunday and feel bad about what you did and try harder. No, 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 man. Like you were made, like in the beginning in Genesis, you were made to walk with the Father in the cool of the evening. He wants to know you. He wants to know your voice. He wants that voice in his ear. He wants to have a relationship with you. That's real. And when you dive into that kind of real Jesus, you will start to have the kind of real joy and real peace and real hope and real love and real transformation that all of us long for. But you got to be real. So next few weeks, let's just dive in. Let's dive in. Let's pursue the real Jesus and let's step into the real life he has to offer. You know, I remember it was just a few months ago, my wife and I were shopping for running shoes because we've reached the age where like quality running shoes is something that's like essential now. And so we were shopping for them. And the thing about good, high quality running shoes is they're expensive. And so she was searching for them, trying to find the best price that she could. And it was late at night and she found the deal on a pair of running shoes. And I lean over and I remember we're sitting in bed right before bed. And I said, yeah, buy those, babe. That's a great deal. You should absolutely do that. And so she entered in the credit card information. I think it was when the email came through a few minutes later. And I actually, I know it was because that email that came through, that was the confirmation email. Uh, revealed the truth. It was totally a bogus website. Like we had been duped. Do you guys know what this feels like? Have you ever searched for something online only to be fooled, right, by a counterfeit website with counterfeit goods that are only there to manipulate you and steal from you? I think we've all know and have experienced what that is like. It is amazing to me how much of our life we just trust with our search engines. It's amazing how much of our life we entrust to Google and Google Maps where we just search that it's gonna provide for us exactly what we're looking for. You know, the title of this message I love because it's a quest that most of us are on is searching for real life. You know, search online, search is the map by which we travel online. It, it, it's the thing that empowers us to do that. If you think about it, we spend so much of our time asking questions online and attempting to find answers. And it's amazing how much we entrust parts of our being and our everyday life over to the results that it yields. You know, also recently, my wife and I and family, we moved across town in Louisville. And it's the first time we've done this as a family, and we found ourselves making a list of all the hopes and dreams we wanted out of our new house. And so we made lists of things that I was hoping to have and that my wife was hoping to have. And the thing that happened really quickly, and I hope you can identify with me, is the list we had on one side of all the things that we wanted, and then our budget over here, they didn't line up very well. Like all the items we wanted, we, we definitely couldn't afford. And so we began the process of elimination. And one of the things I learned to say to myself and to my family and my wife would say to me is we would say this phrase over and over and over again, which is this, 
A house can only make you as happy as a house can. If you think about that, that's so true, right? Like a house can only make you as happy as a house can. One of the mistakes we make with things, with houses and whatever you want to fill in the blank with, is it's not that they don't have value. Things have value. Things can make you happier. They can help you out. The problem is we misplace the amount of value they add to our life. That a house can only make me as happy as my house can. Like, I like that my commute to work is shorter. That helps make me have a happier life. But a house can only make me as happy as a house can. Same thing is true with granite countertops. Like granite countertops can only make you as happy as granite countertops can. Um, front row seats at a concert will make you as exactly as happy as front row seats at a concert can. When we misplace the value with it, that's where the problem comes in. And so I think all too often what we do when we're searching for real life, what we are doing is we're like my wife late at night searching for running shoes. We take the credit card information of our lives and we enter it into counterfeit websites and counterfeit goods. We give ourselves fully, physically, emotionally, spiritually to the wrong things. And I think it leads us down the wrong path and we're searching for real life and we struggle to find it. Well, one of the verses that Paul shares with us from chapter one of Colossians verse 21, he says this, and I think this encapsulates what uh, what begins our search for real life. He says this, he says, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. It may seem like a harsh verse, kind of is, but but it's true. And I think to a certain degree, intuitively, a lot of us understand what this verse means. Like we understand that we are not only enemies of God, we become enemies of ourselves, of relationships of the people we love. We become even enemies of creation itself. We understand that the way that we are living is not healthy. Like we can see that we have gaps in our life. We have areas of our life that don't add up to the person we wanna be. We have parts of ourselves that are not who we really wanna be. And so we don't know what to do with this gap. We do not know what to do. The Bible lets us know clearly that the beginning of understanding the gospel is understanding that left on our own, that there is a gap between us and God and the life that we want and the life that God wants for us, that there's a gap between us and where that is. And we can sense that in creation, we can sense that in society, we can sense that even just within our own selves and our own hearts, that we don't measure up. And so in our search for real life, we're attempting to deal with this gap. We want to find how do I deal with who I am versus who I want to be. And I think in our attempt to deal with that, it's easy to be fooled by fake. It's easy for us to give in to counterfeit because intuitively we know, we know that things don't add up. And so we want them to be true. I wanted the price of my wife's running shoes to be the price I saw on that website. And so because I wanted it to be true, I tried to make it true. You know, what's interesting is when I meet the most authentic people, the people that just live real, the most authentic people, you know what they have? They have this strange confidence when it comes to their weaknesses. Like when they see a weakness, they're not bothered by their weakness. They have a strange way of approaching their weaknesses and just laying it out there. Those are the most authentic people, the most real people, is they're just open with the gaps that they have. And I think what we do with the parts of our lives that don't add up, I think that is the journey for how you live a real life. I think all too often what we end up doing is we try to minimize our gaps and maybe hide them. Sometimes maybe we justify them and we double down on our weaknesses and and, uh, we say, that's just the way that I am. So what you need to do is you need to deal with it. Maybe, Maybe you're really good at blaming others and not taking ownership of your actions. It seems like it's always your parents, right? You can find ways to blame others. You know, one of the other things that I find interesting as the online pastor is that the online can be an escape from that reality. That online, it's easy to create a counterfeit version of yourself because you don't wanna deal with that gap where you say, I am an enemy to God, that we don't actually wanna deal with that. You know, it's not lost on me that some people are attracted to an online church for this very reason. That maybe you find yourself watching church so you don't have to be in church. That you find yourself um, tricking yourself into thinking, you know what, I'm watching this so therefore I'm a part of it. You know, there's a big difference between watching church online and being the church online. The location doesn't matter. It's what's happening internally. Are we living out the mission and vision of the church? Are we living out what God has placed 
before us. Are we uh, living the real life that God's called us for? Are we still searching for it? Paul continues on in Colossians chapter 1. Uh, he says this in verse 22. He doesn't leave us lost there. He says this in 22. He says, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. So let me pause there for a second and say, you are not left behind, alienated from God. Like you are not left alienated from God because of your evil behavior, but because of Christ's death and resurrection, he presents you as holy. He presents you as someone that's not alienated from God, that's free of blemish and free of accusation. But in verse 23, he begins with this powerful word, it's a small word, that I think unlocks the mystery of finding the real life, of, of ending the search for real life. He says in verse 23, this first word he says this is, if, if you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, that we were alienated and then we we're reconciled if, if you continue, if you're established, if you're firm, if you do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. You know, just a few verses down, one of the things I love that Paul writes is he talks about this mystery and how simple it is to get lost in different ways of defining mystery. And, and, and at that time, people would believe different myths and legends and all these things. It's not any different than us today. Maybe the myths change, but the, the method's still the same, that there's a mystery that's been kept hidden. The mystery is this, that the hope of glory, the hope of dealing with the gap where we are glorified and made new and made perfect is hidden within Christ who's hidden within us. And that that is the thing we've been searching for. You're not gonna find the life you've wanted. You're not gonna find real life hidden in other things. It's not gonna be hidden in a new home. It's not gonna be hidden in granite countertops or in front row seats. It's not gonna be hidden in a new boyfriend. Um, it's not gonna be hidden in a wraparound porch. That was something we wanted, we didn't get. Where it's gonna be hidden is in Christ. You know, if I were to be honest about today's story, about where it intersects my life. I'd have to go back to when I was 21 years old. I, I was newly married when I was 21. And my life and my wife's life, what brought us together uh, was the church. And we both had the same top two goals that we knew, without a doubt, at 20 years old when we had met, we knew that God had called us to do two things. He had called us to live as missionaries in a foreign country, and he had called us to adopt. We knew that without a doubt. But what's interesting is after we dated and we're engaged and we're married, we found different things worth chasing to us. We were really good at school and both of us were in hot pursuit of PhDs. We were gonna be working at a university and that's what the life that lied ahead. Married for three, four months, um, my wife was diagnosed with cancer. And I can tell you now, you know, uh, 16 years later, that without that moment, I don't know what would have happened, that God used her diagnosis and the next three years of her getting healthy to redirect our path, not away from bad things, but away from things that we weren't called to, back to what we were called to. And three years later, uh, we ended up moving to Haiti. I had never even been to Haiti before until the day I moved there and we ended up living there for four years. My first day in Haiti, I had spent my first night there at my new home in Haiti. And I woke up that morning and I'm not exactly sure what the why of how this happened, but my wife and I found ourselves going to some other missionaries across our city and going to the one other place that had Americans that had a mission and we were visiting there. And the second part of what we were called to came true, where that day, my second day in Haiti, my wife and I met my daughters, identical twins. We had no idea at that moment that that's what was happening. But my second day in Haiti, my wife and I and our family came together for the first time. Now, God didn't finish that work for another seven years. That's a different story. But my point is the real life that God desires is found in us pursuing what he's called us to pursue. I love what Matt Reagan said earlier when he said, you're never gonna find real life chasing fake Jesus. You're never gonna find real life chasing the things that God's not called you to chase. You're never gonna fill the gap in 
between who you are and who you want to be until you surrender it all. You're never going to find real life on your own. You are going to be alienated from God is what the Bible says until you give in and stand firm and know that you've been reconciled to God through Jesus. And that's not hidden in anything else, guys. It is hidden in Christ. And so what I'm going to add to all of this is say that the real life you're going to find is not hidden in a counterfeit website. I hope you take the credit card of your life and I hope what you do is you enter it into Christ and say, I know hidden within Jesus is a firm foundation and that I can trust him, that that is the real life that I'm searching for. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, my prayer is that in this moment, we can all recognize that there's so many counterfeit things that we allow to captivate our heart and distract us from the things that you've ultimately called us to be. God, my prayer for right now is that for those that are hearing this message, I think oftentimes we know the next thing that you have asked us to do. Oftentimes we know the next step we need to take in faith because you've placed it upon our heart. But God, we are too afraid to take that step or we're too enticed by other things or we're too fooled by counterfeit things. God, I pray that we don't chase the things of this world that alienate us from you or we're left on our own to our evil behavior, but God, that we can pursue and know you and that the real life that we all are searching for is hidden within Christ. And so Lord, my prayer is that we will close that gap by entrusting our full heart that in Jesus we are made whole. And it's in his name I pray, amen. Hey, online family, one of the ways you can respond to this message today is by doing something that we do each and every week here at Southeast Christian Church and take communion together. And the amazing thing about communion is that it's a, a weekly meal we get to take together to remember what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross, that his body as the bread was broken for us, that his blood as the juice was poured out for us on the cross. And the cool thing about communion is that you don't have to be here in person to be able to take part in that. Even if you just have bread at your home, if you have juice at your home, you can take part in that with us today. And what I loved about Stephen's message is that he reminded us that it doesn't matter what these things are that we're chasing apart from Jesus, that none of them are going to fulfill us like Jesus can. And it goes the same thing for me, whether it's success or money or a new house or a car or relationships or sports or whatever that may be for you at home today. We have to remind ourselves that there is absolutely nothing in this world that is meant to fulfill us that only Jesus, only the Son of God was made to fulfill that huge hole in our heart. And what I so much loved about Stephen's message is that he reminds us that because of Jesus, we can have a real authentic life that we've been searching for this whole time. It's not in any of those other things, it's only in Jesus. And the cool part about that is that the only way we get to have a relationship with our Father is because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that's why we celebrate communion, right? That we gather each week with our friends and our families here at church and remind ourselves that it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with what Jesus did for us on the cross and that his body was broken for us, that his blood was poured out for us. And as we head into this next song, let's remember that Jesus loves you, he died for you, and he is for you.
together like this. Come on. We're going to raise a hallelujah together in this place and celebrate some baptisms together. Sing with me. I'm raising hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Sing I raise. Now I raise a
Hey, online family, Derek and Kanisha here with you. What a great service. I loved how Stephen and Matt reminded us that we are really all trying to follow this real Jesus. But what we're doing most of the time is we're almost following everything but him, that we're searching for all of these things that aren't going to fulfill us, whether it's a house or a car or a relationship or a friendship. Uh, we're searching for these things that we think are going to fulfill us, but they're really not. The only thing, the only one that's going to fulfill us is Jesus. And so, Kanisha, I'm interested to hear from you. What was something that jumped out to you and connected from the service? Well, Derek, I'm actually on the same page as you. That word artificial really means something. We have so many things that are constantly thrown at us in the world today that all you can see is things that don't reflect real. And everyone wants to live that real life. Being able to see a God that is consistently real and absolutely showcases that to us, that means a whole bunch. And just, I, I really want to make sure that we are being real with one another and showing how that Jesus reflects that back in our life. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And so for you, Kanisha, on a personal level, what does that look like for you and your life and walk with Jesus? Well, I think that for me personally, one thing that I try to be is transparent. Everyone has their own personal story and it doesn't always look the way that we think that it should. And I think sharing those portions, not just the good, but also the things that have changed us, that have molded us, that have made us really look into who God is. Those are the things that are important because that's where we connect, honestly. Being able to showcase what we came through, what we overcome, even things we're still struggling with. I think when we are transparent enough to showcase the real of us, people can see the real of God through that. Awesome. And talk about a great transition uh, into the story we have coming up here in just a minute. We reminded you guys at the very beginning of service to stick around because we have a story from one of our group leaders and talking about transparency that's Mary Lou. Circumstances these last few years have pushed her closer to this real authentic relationship with Jesus. Uh, so why don't you guys check out the story about Mary Lou Ballard. My name is Mary Lou Ballard and I have lived in Louisville for most of my life, which is uh, many years. Um, I've been married for 36 years and uh, two years ago this month is when my husband went to heaven and I started going to Southeast Christian Church then. We've been married 36 years and it was the best husband anybody could ask for. We did ministry together. Um, in 2019, he came home from the hospital under hospice care and God gave us another eight months together. July 5th was the first time Southwest had gathered together. Uh, after the COVID shutdown. And it was scary. It was the first time I'd gone to church without Ken. And I went by myself, because I knew I had to go, because I wanted to get closer to God, because I wasn't that close. And so I went and God just worked it out wonderfully. And all the time I was still watching the Southeast uh, online. So if I stayed home and couldn't get up because of the grief, I would still watch Southeast Online. And then even sometimes when I went to church, I'd come back and watch Southeast Online because <laughs> I just wanted to hear it again. But God was speaking to me through Kyle's sermons. Uh, in 2021, I was blessed to become a host of a uh, online group. And over just a few months, we've grown, grown together so much. It's just like we devote ourselves to the teaching, fellowship, prayer. We share our struggles. We share our life. And they have been a family of believers that I've never had. And I knew I wouldn't be growing. I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for that family, that community. And it's amazing how God has just bonded us together. When we first started, they were really quiet, you know, because it's strangers. You know, you've got absolute strangers coming into a Zoom meeting and you just signed up for it. And it's like, I don't even know what we're going to be doing. But they signed up, they stuck with it. And after a few weeks, they started talking. And then we were sharing, sharing our struggles, um, sharing our faith. Um, they 
they do most of the talking. I love it. And now they just can't wait till, I can't wait till Wednesday comes. And then I got a map, a U.S. map I put up in my spare room where my prayer room is. And I've got their pictures on that and uh, their names written on there. So I look on, look at that and I see that's my family. That's my family. One of the things that we love the most about Mary Lou is that she is transparent and authentic. And she is that way because just like you saw in the video of the circumstances of the past couple of years have kind of forced her and pushed her towards this close relationship with Jesus. And that's what makes her such a great group leader, to be honest, is that she can relate to people. She's so empathetic and she loves them uh, because she has that same relationship with Jesus. Uh, and what is amazing about her story is that she's gotten connected to our real online community, not only here in Louisville, but across the world where you guys are at home. And we want you to be a part of our online family. And the way that you can do that, the way that you can raise your hand and let us know that you're there is by texting CONNECT to 733-733. Guys, we love to connect with you during the week. That's why we're here. We're not just here for the weekend. We're here for those other six days of the week. We'd love to have a conversation with you, hear what's going on, pray, for, pray with you, and connect you uh, to our ministry. Uh, and secondly, we have summer in Colossians that we're in week five of right now during the summer. Uh, we would love for you to be a part of it. I don't know if you've been keeping up with the memorization challenge at home. I know our team has had a ton of fun doing that in the office and texting back and forth about it. Uh, the way you can get connected with that summer reading challenge is is uh, on Facebook. We have a link in the chat right now and on your screen. And we also have our digital resources page with another link in the chat uh, that you guys can connect with as well. Uh, but we're so glad that you guys have been here with us today, hearing from both Matt and Stephen. Uh, we hope you stick with us over in this month of July through this In Real Life series. And we'll see you all next week.